Okay, our next speaker is Jay Raskin, who's going to be talking about uh, state planning and a little bit about Jay. Jay is currently the Director of Land Protection for Mount Grace Land Conservation Trust, the Credit Regional Land Trust that has held and served 28,000 acres for 28 years. From, from 2006 to 2014, Jay coordinated the North Coffin Regional Landscape Partnership, a voluntary collaborative with land trust, state and federal conservation agencies, municipal board members, academic institutions, and regional planning organizations who are working to conserve the footprint of the and natural areas in the 26 town and greater North Coffin region of Massachusetts. The partnership organizes educational sessions for landowners to learn more about land and conservation options, works with town board members to conserve community resources, and coordinates multiple town landscape scale conservation
Um, so here's the here's the typical uh, workshop that, that we you know that we've created over over years of trial and error that seems to um, convey the information to the landowners in such a way as not too overwhelming, but gives us enough time to meet those folks and you know get those relationships going. So we usually just start off with a, an introduction of what estate plan is about, um, and then we have a panel uh, including an estate planning attorney. A land conservation specialist, and oftentimes a forester that can answer the questions and go over the big themes. Um, we always make sure that there's landowner, landowners there that can tell their story too, because I think you've heard today. Um, you know, they seem to just kind of encapsulate, encapsulate all that information into something real that the landowners in the room can can, uh, can respond to. So if you're if you're going to get rid of anything, don't get rid of the landowner stories. You want to have those landowners there to talk about their journey. Have final qu uh, question and answer period. And then um, the bonus thing that you can do is then schedule people from that meeting to meet with land trust uh, representatives one-on-one -on -one, or even a state planning attorney one-on-one. -on -one. It's funny, so many landowners that we work with don't realize you can just call the land trust and they'll meet with you for free. Um, so just set that up at the meeting and you build off that momentum that happened from the workshop and get plugged in and have those conversations right away. And we've also um, you know, promised them free food if you have wine or dessert after the workshop, and you kind of tell people this is going to be a two-hour workshop, but you get through all the talking and the conversation after an hour and a half, they have a half hour that they were planning to be there, and they'll stick around for free, free food who won't, and then you have another chance to, to talk to people and, and uh, you know see what can be the next step. So I'm going to break out that workshop a little bit here. So that estate planning overview, you know, any of us can do this part. Um, it's just... Um, Contextualizing what estate planning is all about, we think about it as a process that includes documents like a will, um, tools like conservation restrictions, tax credits um, that help the landowner achieve their personal and financial goals. We mentioned how land is a different kind of asset for a lot of people. It's not just like a stock or a bond. There's a lot of emotional attachment. And just mentioning that in the, in the workshop, um, kind of frees people up to ask questions about like, how do I do my family? How do I handle this issue. Um, we also make sure to mention that you know, if you're not planning, if you're not thinking about the future of your land, you're going to probably pay more in taxes, you're going to see your land uh, turn into something you don't want to see, and it might add to animosity amongst your, your heirs or family members. And then we also let people know, you know, in our workshop we're going to focus on the conservation option because most of you as landowners know how to subdivide your land and know how to you know, parcel it out and sell it off. So we're not going to spend a lot of time about how you can plan your land that way, but more how these tools can, uh, these conservation tools can help you conserve some of that. Um, so then we kind of move into that panel uh, setup. And um, this part is usually done by a state planning attorney. And you may be wondering how am I going to afford to have an estate planning attorney come to these workshops. Um, has anybody here done a workshop with an attorney? How many people here are in I'm not going to offend you, I hope. Um, no. But uh, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to get uh, an attorney to come to these workshops even without money because this is their business. And oftentimes, they really appreciate the opportunity to do some good, good work for land protection, uh, donate some time, and again, need some more clients. So this part of the uh, workshop is these basic things that always have come up in our uh, past uh, you know, they come up during, during this process and we try to get this covered right away um, because there, there are items that everybody's thinking about. So the attorney just mentions, you know, what a will is, how do you set that up, homestead declaration, all these different items. And it just spends a few minutes addressing questions there um, and, and then we move on. Um, so from there, we, there's just so much information when you think about taxes, um, wills, trusts, ownerships, and the, the tendency for a workshop like this is for the experts to just get really into the weeds and talk a lot about the gift tax when no one in the room really cares about that at the moment. Um, and so we try to frame the different tools that are out there under these themes so that people that are listening to the information can kind of relate back to, well, okay, this information is about how to reduce my tax burden. Or the information I'm learning now is about how I can keep my land more affordable. Or maintain family relationships, any of these items here. And then we get into those big goals and just kind of flesh out the details and talk about uh, some of that information. So the attorney will talk about the different taxes, real basic overview, um, how it relates to land conservation, 
And then um, it's very critical for these workshops to have uh, a, a, someone that's, that's comfortable and actively facilitating these things and can just mention to the attorney, hey, that's great. And you're prepping these people beforehand. <coughs> but you don't want this to go on and on and on about the details of the tax system. You want just a little bit of information about the basics, and then you really want to open it up to everybody that's in the room to ask the questions and steer the conversation into the details that the learners want to get into. Uh, that next theme is about you know, how to reduce your taxes and keep the land affordable. So we talk about the current, current use tax programs. Um, and then we start drifting into conservation easements as a way to reduce your property tax burden. And here's where the land trust uh, representative usually comes over um, and pops up and starts talking about what those, what those things are all about. Another goal people might have is to permanently protect all or part of their land. Um, we get into the land conservation options more in detail with that land trust rep and what a land trust is, because folks don't know what, what the role is of this um, interesting group that lives in the town. Another theme of uh, how to derive income from your land. Um, you know, the land trust person continues to talk about some of these items, uh, releases, and then if we have a forester or a service forester, um, extension forester, we can talk about forestry and the different NRCS programs and different incentives that are out there for that kind of thing. And again, it's just, you know, it's five minute overview or less, and then it's asking people for questions because um, you know, that's, that's really what you want to have see happen, obviously, the engagement, but not the regurgitation of information. Uh, that doesn't sound very nice. Um, and then another theme again, keep land in the family. That's where the attorney will get into trust, LLCs, other kinds of information, um, other kinds of ownership. And then the last thing um, is just getting into family relationships. And this is, you know, again, this is sort of, this can get interesting, get intense. Um, but you just kind of have people think about, you know, do you want to involve your heirs in the conversation? If so, how do you want to move through that? If you think it's going to be a little bit tricky, have you ever thought about getting a mediator or a facilitator? And we're lucky in Massachusetts that through one of the grants, we can actually um, give people a few hundred dollars to hire a mediator to come think and, and sort through some of these issues. So any um, any questions on that part of the, of the workshop? The, the experts, the you know, the conveying information, how to facilitate that? Yeah. I, I just had a vocabulary question. What is briefly let us know what a homestead declaration is. Probably not. Um, <laughs> I, I never heard that term. So. Uh, it's, it's a. I mean, an attorney can help me here, but in Massachusetts, if you declare your your homestead as if you do this official sort of process, that means if you're ever um, sued or um, you know you hurt someone on your property and, and they map you, they they can take you for everything you work except your home. So basically, you, you, you're always going to be insured to have a place to live. So we share that with the landlords. But do you, I don't know if that's similar in New York or Connecticut if you have that. But we, that's one of those basic things that the attorney starts out with. something you want to have. So you really have a collection of people that are talking about their financial goals and then there's Frank Say with more than Sometimes yes and sometimes no. And um, what we found helps is uh, making sure that at the beginning um, you have volunteers that are sort of greeters. Um, you know how everybody, when we have a workshop, someone shows up like 20 minutes early and trying to get the ladies system going and it's a little bit, you know, maybe you're frustrated. Well, just plan for that. Make sure you, you know people are going to come early and have a team of people that just says, hey, welcome in, have a seat, here's some coffee, and just starts to talk to people a little bit about why they're there. And uh, it's interesting, like, those folks that have a chance to talk a little bit early are often the ones that then share some of that information. Um, but it doesn't always happen. And so uh, it's nice when the landowners, you know, if you have some landowners that we're going to get into secondly as part of this workshop, you know, they, you're picking them because you know they have interesting stories that are going to relate. And so they usually talk about them. Um, yeah, it's mixed. Um, any other questions about that, that part? Okay, so landowner stories. 
We ask people just to talk about what their goals were, were the tools and steps they took, and any pitfalls and tips that you want to share. Again, this is like a nice way to encapsulate and summarize the, the information that the experts were, were conveying um, in a way that, that the folks would make sure the folks can really you know, hear it. So just to you know summarize the, the workshop itself, I've definitely seen over the years like there's a tendency just to get too focused on all the tools and the details. So you want to prep your people to make sure that you're just giving an overview and they're giving a lot of people a chance to ask questions. And then they hang out afterwards, like dessert kind of you know wine and cheese idea. So now I wanted to just go through how we, we set these up and organize them. But any any other questions at this point? Yeah, no. Yeah, so what I'm wondering is, is it possible, I mean, can you imagine value in having an kind of estate planning workshop in which it's more of a more of a peer to peer um, you know where you're, there's more time for landowners to talk about the procedures they went through or the steps and you have land trust staff there or volunteers that know enough details to be able to explain the process but not go in so much with having an attorney there and then have a follow-up time for those people who really want to get down into it to actually have time to meet with an attorney uh, themselves or to meet with a land trust staff to talk about their particular situation. I'm just wondering if that, I like that idea. Well, I'm just wondering if, if that there's a continuum. Because I've heard of, I've heard of like Woods Forums being designed to be more focused on estate planning. So it's more peer-to-peer, -peer, more landowner stories about about their experience with an easement or with protecting the land. Experts being able to provide some information about the process, but not going into the weeds with a an attorney, and then having the attorney be a prize. You know, for those that want to take the next step, I'm just throwing that out as a measurable step. You know, since so like you bring people together, there's some comfort level, and then you hold out a prize, and those landowners who take the step, that's a measurable step towards an end, you know, result, which is them moving towards conserving their land. So I'm just, I like that idea. You know, the, the nice thing about having an attorney speak is that it's a book, and people like to come and hear that person speak for free. Um, so um, I think the way what you're talking about would really work though. If you, if you set it up right and you had landowners, um, like we were talking earlier, that were prepared to really share their story and get into the details. Um, and I'm sure there's a way to sort of met, uh, market that in that way, that phrase. Um, so I, I like that idea. I think we need to try that. Any other questions about the workshop setup or other ideas you guys have? Yes, what are the most typical outcomes from these workshops? I mean, what are, what are people doing when they leave exactly? Um, it's all about capturing that moment, and then you have a lot of success. So if you're uh, thinking strategically and you're, and you're making sure everybody who comes has the opportunity or is even you know, kind of directed, hey, sign up over here for a meeting with a uh, local land trust person. Or in the evaluation, it's, it has a check off and you write that in. Or again, come on over here and sign up to meet with the estate planning attorney. If you're doing that, um, I mean, those slots go real quick. I and mean, we've done a lot of projects just from, from that because we were, we were, after trial and error, of like having workshops and then just not doing anything for a year. Where are those landowners? Um, setting it up like that, there's a, there's a, you know, we've had a lot of conservation projects. Um, we've had a lot of people just enroll in, what, in Massachusetts, it's Chapter 61, the current use program. Um, we've had care number even get poor stewardship plans to the state. So a lot, a lot actually happens. You just uh, plan on the effort, you know, and then also give yourself some time that week or two later to do some follow-up calls and, and just uh, keep that momentum going. Yes? But I was just mentioning that um, when we did a, a legacy training, we had a an attorney who is, who is well versed in that and actually we knew somebody they did a, a combination the landowner was there with the attorney and at the end the attorney made an offer to everybody that attended the workshop for a free consultation and you know I'm going so I think it was just a great incentive <coughs> first visit, but 
That is super. Please do. Yeah, and that could be an, an invitation too, you know, free follow-up meeting, right. like qualify or something. And most attorneys have that free meeting anyway um, after office. So it's just a matter of like setting up a time at the, the library or somewhere that's people can come to meet that person. So I think how much more time do we have? Maybe five minutes or twenty minutes? Oh, okay. Um, okay, so I just want to touch on a few things about how we make sure we pack the room um, and how we, how we do that. So I have these 10 steps that we think about for every event, and I'm just going to talk about how they relate to this eighth morning workshop, and, and I'll probably um, mirror some of the things that Tyler mentioned. But we always you know, start with what our goals are, how many people we want in the room, our short-term goals, and then our long-term goal. Like, what's our point here? Are we trying to conserve land in this watershed, in this ridge top? Are we trying to get this kind of landowner using Mary's information? So take take a moment to write that stuff down because if you're not if you're not really you know you don't have a place to kind of debrief your workshop and, and learn from it. So um, we want to get better at this each time. So then we spend a lot of time thinking about our audience, as I, I think Mary talked about. And I stole a lot of the pictures. Um, this is the top of this one. I just found. Reach, you know, the woodland retreaters with the dogs, the working the land guy with the, the uh, piece of machinery he doesn't really know how to use. Um, <laughs> you know, who, who, who you, um, you want to reach because you're going to set up everything else about your workshop to target that, that person. The location, the message, the speakers. So the next thing, think about the content and agenda. So I just gave you a sample format for what one of these could look like. Um, who your presenters are, they're going to reach your landowners, uh, target audience, and then location is so key. So we used to be, you know, just not think about this stuff. We'd have workshops in the middle of the winter, Thursday night at like 8. And, you know, it's no one came. We were targeting. So um, this is there's another picture of these. Then we had the senior center in the, in the town of Barrie on a Saturday at 10. And, you know, it was packed. So just because people were familiar with that location, those are the kinds of folks we were looking for. It was the right time of day. So, so don't, uh, don't discount the location. Um, and then there's this whole series of logistics. But important things for an estate planning workshop, I'll emphasize again, is having a facilitator, someone that can start out and say, hey, I'm going to facilitate this. No one here likes to be in a meeting that keeps going. So don't be offended if I cut you off or ask, ask us to keep moving. I want to get us out of here an hour and a half. Is that okay with everybody? Everybody said yes. So then they don't feel as bad when you tell them to stop. No one ever feels bad. Um, having the greeters is so important just to get people thinking, uh, feeling comfortable, and, and maybe loosening up a little bit so that they'll share their, their stories because everybody else is thinking the same thing. Having a microphone is really important typically for folks we're, we're talking with. And uh, evaluation so you know how you did. Um, that's, you know, these are a few basic things, I guess. Um, the message, so what's the hook that's going to get people to come, as I mentioned, to Bill? You know, just the fact that there's an attorney there often really helps. Free food is great. Um, in our area, we don't really ever mention estate planning. Um, maybe down here, that's something that landowners are more familiar with. We think more about, we use this phrase, deciding the future of your land um, a lot, and that um, seems to work. Because in our area, you know, people don't think that they can do estate planning because they don't live on an estate. You don't have a castle or something. You know, it's just not the right <laughs> phrase to use necessarily. So there's an, there's an example of the postcard we use. We love postcards because you don't have to open up anything. You get it. You kind of have to look at it. And you can put it on your fridge. Um, and uh, you know we're using, in this, I think we, Mary's looked at one of these and we're, we're thinking about with the retreat owners. So we try to use language that would help there. And, um, you know, it really comes down to your messengers, though, and how you're getting the message out, passively or actively. So I'm a big fan of, um, if you could have that postcard signed by a landowner that folks will relate to, or let's say you're targeting 10 towns, and you can pick, you can have the Open Space Committee chair or the Hong Kong chair from that town sign a letter that's going to that neighborhood, or wherever in town people respect, and you're going to get so much further. It's just about who's saying the information that gets people to think about it. Um, so in Massachusetts, in our area, we use this guy, Bill Rose, everybody loves him. He runs right out the farm, and he'll just, uh, you know, he'll sign the postcard for us. He'll 
go door to door in the area that we're targeting. You know, if it's in Phillipston, um, this is a force we used to work with a lot with. The forcers are great messengers, as Glenn Frieden. Um, but it's all about this active, this active recruitment. Um, so the postcard's great, the passive flyers up, and the invitations are super, but um, it's finding this guy who's, uh, who's willing to just call his neighbors or go door to door, or just, you know, not a little canvassy, but um, talk to the folks at the post office, the grocery store, and what we like to do is, um, here's the next slide, when we're planning one of these, this is at a bar, um, that was fun. Um, we were putting on these, we pulled together a team of people from that area, you know, the local folks, the land trust board members, the CUR, um, conservation commission leaders, and we think about all these steps, you know, where should we have this, who are we targeting, um, and uh, we generate uh, names of people, folks who are comfortable with uh, calling them, we get off this list from the board of assessors, you know, so we, we try to have a team of like 10 people, and each person has 10 to 15 landowners that they're um, actively calling uh, to invite them. And then I've also been in a situation where I didn't have that team and a couple of us, of us on the staff just called through the lists. And um, it's just amazing how little, I mean, it's a, it's a couple of nights of your time, but just calling, hey, I just want to make sure you got that invitation. We'd love to see you there. We have this estate planning attorney who's fabulous. I think we'll get a lot out of it. Do you think you can come? And did that change our show for you from like, you know, tens to 50s and 60s. Now we have more of a problem not of having you know too many people coming, uh, which is fun to have. So another another good thing about or another key thing about planning is um, just that travel run idea, which I found a little tricky with the with some of the professionals because they, including myself, you know, I just I think I know what I'm doing. Um, but having a, a, a travel run for people to go through their talk um, really helps because you can just make sure it's short, sweet, whatever your goal is. And especially with the landowners, having them just say it a couple times, make sure they have an outline, that really helps um, make sure you're getting the, the information across the way they want to convey. At the event, um, there's always something crazy that happens, so I always have a couple of volunteers who can help me keep unflapped, that's a word. And like, you know, we ran out of half and half one time, so someone ran to get half and half to save the day. Or we didn't have an extension cord, that volunteer got an extension on board. So having that is, is good. Actively facilitate, as I mentioned. Evaluations are important. And then, again, as, as the questions I've alluded to, like have those things right there that people can take to the next step. Um, and that's a little bit more about the follow up. So it's all about that momentum that I mentioned. So that's, um, that's my, those are my tips for having this uh, go well. And again, I'll just um, reiterate. Um, another landowner we worked with recently, the Stoddard family, um, never came to our, you know, our traditional woods walks, um, you know, in the environmentally focused events. And we had an estate planning event at a restaurant in town that everybody went to, so they showed up and uh, got to meet them. And it turned out they were, you know, at the right time. They had this 110 acre parcel. Um, and uh, got to know uh, Ralph and Gloria, and we just uh, got a grant to serve their, their parcel and turn it into the first um, conservation area in South Athol, which is a real need for that community. So um, these, these things, I think these, these events can really work to get people that information they need, the relationships they need um, to go on that process. So that's all I have. Any, any uh, further questions before I? Do you take your show on the road and bring it down here? Um, Bill can. <laughs> um, but there's, uh, the, I, I sort of showed a modified um, PowerPoint. There's a, there's a few more slides in there, so if anybody wants that to pull from, um, definitely email me, um, Rasky at nonphrase.org, or any, any of the you know, copies of flyers that we've used, I can send you a whole thing, so you can just use that to build from. So I still, I still have the um, and someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a theme. <laughs> 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 any, um, any last questions? <laughs> okay, thank you.